of iniquity i want you to underline that phrase mystery of iniquity that is what we have to deal with now amen the mystery of iniquity doth already work is not going to work is already working hello so in the in the in our challenge as believers is to be victorious against the mystery of iniquity The Bible talked of the mystery of righteousness. The Bible talked of the mysteries of God. Now he's talking of the mystery of iniquity. The mysterious activities of sin and iniquity. Rebellion against God. Disguising in different formats is already at work to prepare the ground for the Antichrist and make it so easy. So easy. For the world, you know, recently myself and mommy were just were, 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 were watching an article on the internet of a man, a businessman that um, decided to put a chip on his right forearm to keep, yes, on his wrist, right wrist, to track himself or something like that, okay? And mommy said, hey, come, daddy, come and see. I said, that's what the Bible says. That's, Bible says in the, last, the, in the days of the Antichrist, men will have a mark on their forehead and on their right hand. Okay? And people have been doing that. Are you following what I'm saying? Okay? They have been testing that the best place to put a microchip in the human body for keeping documents, tracking and things like that and all that. The day is going to come that um, your, 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 what do you call it now? Your um, ATM card will not be in a card now. It will be in your hand. Just put your hand there. And so it's just going to be here. Are you following? I'm saying, have you gone to an airport and they put that um, thermometer on your forehead like that? The day is going to come. You know, there are some countries that they don't use thermometer. You just pass through a machine and that one measure your temperature. The chip is going to be in your body and then, okay, you are free to enter. You are free. You won't be able to do any activity if you don't have the chip on your forehead or your hand. But now the mystery of iniquity is already at work. The world is being prepared. While it is in the form of advances, technology minus God. The devil is secretly taking everything over. Are you following what I'm saying? Today is just going to come that the Antichrist is just going to show up on the surface and then take it. You know, almost all our, almost all our information is on the chip now. Do you get what I'm saying? If you look at Nigeria now, we're having um, BVN number in the bank. We're having TIN number everything and things like that so every everything about you can be known just in one chip and then it go into a central bank all over the world so if you don't accept the mark of the antichrist you won't be able to do anything in the world you will even be stateless as it were praise god so the bible talks of the mystery of iniquity is already at work the mystery of iniquity walking through the rebelliousness of men, standing against God, not wanting too much of God. We don't want too much of God. We don't, we don't want too much of God. We don't want too much of God. And the devil said, yes, we don't want too much of God, but we don't mind the devil. While they drove God out, the devil is replacing God in many, many places. Are you following what I'm saying? So he said, that mystery is already at work. But we as believers, it, what is going to keep us awake and aware is the word of God. You can't read newspapers and know what is happening now because everything looks acceptable. Are you following what I'm saying? If you read the Bible, maybe we'll get to it today. You see, as it was in the days of Noah. How many of you know that the major sin in the days of Noah was homosexuality? Huh? 
Are you following what I'm saying? And God was so angry. He had to take out that world. But do you know that homosexuality is becoming the most acceptable position in the world today? Those of us that were not accepting in Africa and South America, they say you are backward. That's a direct assault against the command of God. Be fruitful and multiply. Man and woman marry. I hope you follow what I'm saying. So if you are not reading the Bible, you will not know how far the world has gone in preparing the ground for the Antichrist. You just think, if some of you may even wonder and say, why, why, what, is, what is the big deal? Do you get what I'm saying? So the devil is choosing his first team members very carefully. Highly cerebral, popular icons of the age, in the movie world, political world, intellectual world, and things like that. And they just keep writing those things. Are you following what I'm saying? Sometimes when I see those write-ups in newspapers in Nigeria, this is the way they craft it. What is the business of anybody with what two consenting adults do behind closed doors? All these Nigerian holier-than-thou people should not bother about what two consenting adults do behind closed doors. We should bother and say about how these politicians are stealing the nation by. So while he's saying, don't bother about the violation of God's commandment, let's tear up our emotions against the politicians. While we say what the politicians are doing is crazy, it is crazier to violate the law of God. The politicians stealing Nigeria's economy blind will not do as much damage as the anger of God that will come by violating God's commandment. Did you get what I'm saying? So as Christians, you've got to be aware of that because that is going to prepare the, the, the ground for the devil to take over. I don't know if you follow what I'm saying. So when the Bible said the mystery of iniquity is already at work, you see it's been, it started long ago. Amen? When the, when the move for um, women equal rights movement started, as if anybody is making a woman an inferior being, are you following what I'm saying? Started moving. The devil knows where he's going. He's going to attack the marriage institution to destroy. Today, most of the superstars in the world don't believe in marriage. They believe in cohabitation, not the covenanting marriage of husband and wife. In fact, you see such very wealthy people, they, they, just, they just live together. You find, you say, this footballer hi, and his living girlfriend, they have two children. They are not married. And the world consider it as okay. In thing, wonderful. When you say, I'm going to marry, and I say, I want, I want, you know, what's, what's that? Like? Marry? Want to bring yourself into bondage? For a man to be controlling you, a man dictating for you, and things like that, and all that. That's the devil. The devil isn't coming out with horns on his head and tail on his back. In his, in, you know, he's coming through intellectuals now. And you see that insidious voice sounding. Making the things of God look stupid and making the things of the devil look like the newest wisdom that the world has never had. So people are chasing after it. The other time in the church, I, I brought some teaching up for you to show you almost 50 of the leading corporations in the world that their logos are ancient demonic emblems. I many of you remember that teaching? Maybe before this one is over, I will still give you to you again. Do you get what I'm saying? Praise God. So the devil is working with every society. Whatever they have available is going to use it. That's what the Bible called the mystery of iniquity. And do you know that everybody likes every other religion except the name of Jesus? Have you ever noticed that? Yes. Uh -huh. Did you get what I'm saying? Praise God. So and I told you before that as we get closer and closer to the rapture, I don't think it will happen by the time of the rapture, but I suspect that shortly after the rapture, when the Antichrist shows up on this, one of the first things he's going to do is going to criminalize the Bible. It's going to be a major offense to own the Bible. Because the world is looking for a tolerant society. Are you following what I'm saying? Almost every nation today is setting up religious tolerance councils. 
I hope you follow what I'm saying. Where we can tolerate each other. But let me tell you the truth. God and Satan don't tolerate each other in the spirit. Darkness and light don't tolerate each other. One chases the other. Did you hear what I'm saying? So, but the world, I mean, politicians have to keep peace and all that. And the Bible says, why they are looking for peace? Sudden destruction. So, now why are we going over this scripture so that you can be awakened that the days that the Bible is speaking of, we are living in those days. Is that okay? So don't just carry yourself anyhow. I hope I'm communicating with you. Praise God. Amen. The days that we're living in call for certain actions. Now, if, I, if you wear a coat, will it really bring rain? If you just wake up tomorrow morning and put on a coat. I begin to go, this what's happening. Rain is going to fall. Did anybody tell you so? <laughs> no, the dress will not change the season. It's the season that will determine the dress you should wear. Did you get what I'm saying? So if it is not raining season, there's no need to put on raincoat. But if it is raining season, you get an umbrella, you get a raincoat ready, and we're living in very peculiar days. I hope you follow what I'm saying. In fact, let me, let me point your attention to something the Bible says in 1 Timothy. Okay, put your finger in that place. We're still coming back to 2 Timothy chapter 2. 1 Timothy chapter 4. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's, let's read 2 Timothy chapter 3 first of all. Everybody read verse 1. That's in the last days, perilous times shall come. All right, hold it there. Everybody say perilous times. Do we have another translation that can give us another definition of that word perilous? Yes. Um, Amplify it. Yes. But understand this. Yes. That in the last days, they will set in perilous times of great stress and trouble. Great stress and trouble. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. Hard to deal with and hard to bear. Do you know that there was a time in Nigeria here that there are southerners that prefer to make money in the north? I many of you know what I'm talking about. In fact, there are southerners that that is where they were born. That's the only place they know. But suddenly we have entered some days that living in the north of Nigeria is not a child's play anymore. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Ten years ago, how many of you foresaw that you are going to have this kind of day? When you were hearing of bombs, roadside bombers in Iraq, Afghanistan, five years ago, did you think you was going to visit Nigeria? The Bible said, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come. They have come. They are not just coming in future, they have arrived. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Praise God. Yeah, another translation? Yes, sir. NIV. NIV. But mark this. But mark this. They say mark be... it. it no, it, but God, say mark it. Mark it in your conscience. Mark it in your awareness. Did you get what I'm saying? Praise God. Yes? There will be terrible times in the there, last days. There will be terrible times. Not terrific times. Yes, sir. Now, I'm, I'm dealing with what is in the world now. There will be terrific times in the Holy Ghost, but terrible times in the world. Did you hear what I'm saying? Eh? Whoever told you that Nigeria can have a situation that some people will go to a secondary school and carry 200 girls. Are you following what I'm saying? Praise God. If you go to Israel as a nation, Israel has been living in this kind of condition for ages. So they live conscious. And let me say this to you. If we are not going to have physical problem, we must generate the spiritual power to stop the problem as a spiritual problem before it becomes physical manifestation. Let me, let me explain that to you very carefully. Did you hear what I'm saying? Everything that is a physical problem started as a spiritual condition. Nothing spiritual will manifest physically until it has a body to manifest through. You cannot know a spirit of madness until you see a human being that he possesses. Did you hear what I'm saying? Okay? So you don't know what a spirit of insanity can do until you see what when it gets inside a human being. You don't know what the spirit of cancer can do in a body until you find a body that is eating away. And if Christians are not going to find ourselves in Nigeria in the midst of a physical holocaust, 
then we have to deal with the problem while it is still a spiritual problem that can be handled with spiritual weapons. Did you get what I said there? Huh? 1983, there was election in Nigeria. How many of you remember the election of 1983? Huh? Wonderful. Everybody agreed that presidential election was going to be this. The Christians in Nigeria were unanimous in agreement and we held the country in peace. I was in worry when the governorship was held. And as soon as governorship was held, everybody went tribal. And crisis broke out the following week. Are you following what I'm saying? So don't blame politicians for the condition in the country. Put the blame at the doorstep of the church. We are the only organization or institution with the spiritual potency to stop it in the spirit. If we fail to stop it in the spirit, we should look for the best military effort that can help us. I hope you follow what I'm saying. Is that clear? Hello? So all of you sisters, so that we can remain in peace, come for your all-night prayer meeting and your early morning prayer meeting and pray. Show man demon saying, pray and bind those devils. They are bindable. Did you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> Praise God. Young men, young women, do what? Let's raise up. Bible says, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift a standard against. Let that standard be lifted. Okay? No, don't just talk about it. Not talk about it. all these comments in newspapers. You're just giving the nation to the devil. Okay? You, as the believer, that you are aware of what is going on, that this is a spirit that is moving against the human race. You must raise the standard against that spirit. Are you what I'm saying? And then develop your spirit how to live victoriously in these last days. I hope you're what I'm saying. How are you going to say people people go to supermarket? Who knows who is going to carry a bomb into the supermarket? You can't tell. Are you following what I'm saying? But what you can tell is your spirit tell you and say, don't go to that supermarket now. Leave now. Or uh, that me, me teach some. Drop those things and get out now. When your spirit warns you like that and you are 50 meters away when an explosion takes place, you know God led you out of that place. That evil will happen, nobody is going to stop that. But that you must not be where evil happens is your spiritual responsibility. That planes will still crash, nobody is going to stop that. But you must not enter a plane that will crash. That vehicles will have accident, it's going to happen. But you as a child of God, how you will not enter a vehicle going to crash is the responsibility of your spirit man. So living victoriously in these last days, we must understand how to develop ourselves. Is anybody following what I'm saying? Praise God. Christianity must not be what you are playing. It not, must not be playing church now. The pages of the Bible must become translated into your normal living. Not that uh, this is our church for the church that uh, you've been going for years. Do you, have you read the Bible? Do you know what the Bible is talking about? Amen? I'm but, just dealing with the word perilous times. So that you understand that during normal times, there is a behavior. In perilous times, there is a different kind of behavior. I hope I'm communicating something to you. Huh? So the Bible says, this no, mark it in the last days, perilous times shall come. Spiritually perilous times. Physically perilous times are coming. When sin will be made so attractive that you will think it is, uh, God himself will understand. Yeah? But realize this. But realize this. That in the last days, in the last days, difficult times will come. Difficult times will come. Those are not, those are not holiday times that he's talking about. He's talking of events in the world. Listen, because what I want you to see, I, 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 I got on the edge of it last Wednesday, is that there will be an event that is happening in the church for the believer. There will be an event that is happening in the world that we are living in. Did you hear what I'm saying? God's plan is that the believer will be like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the furnace of fire. The furnace of fire will be in the world. You know that the people that threw them into the furnace were consumed. But they were not touched. Because what was in them was stronger than what they were inside. 
God's plan for you as a believer is that what is in you must be stronger than what is operating in the world in these last days. The, the revelation of the Holy Spirit, the information of the Holy Spirit, the sensitivity of the Holy Ghost in your heart will be stronger than all the alarming news that you are hearing. Are you hearing what I'm saying? That you get up in the morning as an executive, this is the normal route to drive to the office and in the night you had a dream or your wife had a dream. Let's change route today. And you get to the office only to find out that some people will lead people on that road, killing people, but you are on another road because what was working inside you is stronger than what is working outside. But the child of God that his spiritual life is lower than the operation in the world will be having a similar experience like unbelievers are having. It's perilous times. Difficult times. In fact, the living Bible says days that will be difficult to be a Christian. That's how the living Bible puts it. Days that will be difficult to be a Christian. Some of you work in companies and offices that are everybody that so in fact everybody is a complete sinner. The, your boss that is speaking in tongues is the chief bribe taker. Who then speak in tongues? The deacon in their church. Did you get what I'm saying? And is the one that is distributing the bribe. One of our daughters just left from one state in Nigeria now. Are you following? I'm saying youth copper that they are giving them work with them um, INEC. And she said, she sent text to us just this evening and said she had to resign and she's coming back home. She's a copper, she, but this is the extra job they gave them. It's because they are, give, they are telling them how what to write and say, I can't do that, my conscience can't do that. So she resigned and left. Those are the days that will be difficult. Are you following what I'm saying? How will a copper that is in another state, that is not her home state, that somebody is telling them what to put inside figures and things like that. So she had to resign and leave. Days that will be difficult to be a Christian, they are on the wall. I feel like some of them it might be smiling at me and devil telling me, I say, Toba is not tight. Oh no, I quite well tight, Brooklyn. God's not looking for tight from dirty and blood money. Two keys today that we're going to we, you write for the purpose of writing down. Number one is take it to the word of God. We're going to do that. We are, I'm just reading scriptures that show you, it's just waking you up, getting you aware and awake. Hello everyone, are you looking for a place to fellowship online this season? Are you searching for an avenue to feed your faith consistently on a daily basis? Are you looking for answers? Then we've got you covered. God has directed his servant, Reverend Olushala Ayodele Areogun, to minister the word of life to every believer. Join in using the following links, www.lifevoicesinternationalchurch.org slash streaming or www.dciradio.org. You can also connect with us on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, SoundCloud, YouTube, and Vimeo with the handle at Reverend Areogo. Fellowship online with us every Wednesday for our midweek service from 5 o'clock in the evening and on Sundays for our super celebration service from 8 o'clock in the morning on the same platform. For inquiries, you can contact us via these telephone numbers plus 234-806-091-9696 plus 234-810- 586-4579 and plus 234-803-725-2124 SMS only. You can also send an email to lifevoices at atmail.com. Remember, this is not the season to fear, but a time to feed on the undiluted word of truth and return back to the place of personal intimacy with God. The Lord has said you are ease, you are hidden, impregnable, and strengthened. Jesus is Lord. We've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. I've got an answer, 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 answer from heaven. My answer, my answer from heaven. No more time, no more time. No more struggles, no 
Got a knife.